LED headlights. <laughs> so, uh, for those who drive an old Land Cruiser, you know exactly what I'm talking about. These sealed beam headlights. I mean, they're lovely because they look nice when they're, when they're on. They're all lovely and warm and inviting. Um, but you literally, sometimes you feel like you actually got out of the truck and just lit a candle and stuck it in there and just sort of, you know, protected it from the wind. They are absolutely atrocious. So when you think about horsepower, you know, the LED uh, drop-in replacements are probably, you know, a good you know, 500 horsepower. These are probably running out of one. They're terrible. Now, I mean, you know, for all intents and purposes, they last forever. This is a, uh, this is actually out of the old truck. This one's actually from Japan. Um, maybe original. This is one of, it's actually, it's high beam. Um, but in order to do an LED replacement, you uh, have to <laughs> do take a number of steps. Uh, first one is buy yourself four rectangular semi-sealed uh, headlights, like, like so. Um, and I'll give you an example of the ones that I bought. You can buy my buddies at Burson's. And uh, I'll up to, I think they're 30 bucks each or something like that. So when you do your headlight replacement, the thing you need to consider about these, so this particular headlight model, and the 80 series is you're up for four globes. So although they do high-low, uh, so they do high-low on, on each of the uh, uh, actual globe assemblies, um, you're gonna need four. So I just end up using the uh, H4, so H4 semi-sealed uh, headlight units, and I bought H4 LED globes via uh, four-wheel drive Supercenter Kings, because I've got a distributor here in town. Um, and so there are 70 or 80 dollars for a pair so you've got so we'll say 80 dollars times two so 160 plus you've got to spend 120 on on the actual semi-sealed units so you can actually put the light globes in it so obviously buy the ones without the globe because you don't need the globe so there's, there's, there's a trick the first ones i bought i actually bought one with globes idiot um not that it's a big deal but uh yeah, very, very simple, but you're gonna need four, unless, unless someone's actually swapped them out originally, or already. Um, it's not overly common, but I'm sure when people uh, have to fix them at, at various times, they may actually do that. So um, have a good look. The easiest way to actually look is obviously pop the bonnet, uh, get in behind, and you'll actually see whether or not it has a uh, the ability to actually take the globe out. So that's a sealed beam. It is one solid unit, semi-sealed, has a hole in the back so you can put the globe in and out. So key fundamental difference. Um, but yeah, so to make your headlights LED, you're up for a, whatever that is, 160 plus 120 equals 280 bucks. Uh, and then on top of that, if you're a little bit anal like I am, I did the park lights as well. So I actually got those from Super Cheap. So they're uh, the little pin uh, push-in ones. And I think they are about $30 for the pair. So what are we up to there? 350 or something. Um, so in my opinion, worth it all. And uh, I'll just cut to some vision of the uh, headlights on anyway, so you can see what I mean. One thing worth noting, they're not actually legal in Australia. So as weird as that sounds, so my other car's a Range Rover um, and it comes with LEDs that flicker and when you put the indicator on it, pulses across and got lights everywhere in the front bumper and all that sort of stuff. That's legal because it comes manufactured with LEDs. That's illegal because it doesn't. So it's one of those really interesting scenarios where I've done it purely so I can see at night time because I do drive a little bit at night time so therefore I have no option <laughs> other than to try and see where I'm going. Uh, I am going to put driving lights in the front but obviously I'm getting a new bar for the front of the truck anyway um, for those in Australia. Yeah, tax time is probably one of the best times of the year for some people. I love it. Um, so a, a bit of my tax is going into some 
a roof racks, aluminium roof rack, and uh, a new steel winch bar for the front of the old girl. Um, and then I'll talk about driving once when we get around to it because I've got my heart set on a couple. So either Terra Loom or Steady, but we'll, we'll wait for those. Um, but uh, yeah, important to note, illegal in Australia, not ADR approved. So how I get around it, well, I don't get around it. Um, I drive around with my headlights on anyway. I drive past police all day. Well, not all day, every day, literally, probably. Um, and I haven't been pulled over yet, but I do actually carry two H4 headlight globes because obviously I had to, I bought them by accident <laughs> um, with me anyway. So if I do run into any trouble, I'll just you know, beg the fifth, plead the fifth, I should say. And if, I, if it really becomes an issue, I'll drop the uh, headlights in there and then on the spot. So it um, hasn't happened yet, but uh, just something to be mindful of. So what we might do now is I'll show you the easy way to to uh, access the headlights and show you how I sealed them and I'll do a few other bits and pieces. So obviously, first things first is to uh, pop the bonnet. Um, I'm super lazy, so, so if I can use a power tool, I will. So or or, or I can air tool. Um, but uh, the trick with using a battery battery drills or any type of drill on these types of screws because they go into the little plastic um, receiver I don't even know what you call it it's more, there's probably a technical name for them I uh, recommend putting your drill into screw, like into the screw mode and no greater than the, the uh, torque setting of four so pulling out four when I'm putting them in I go to two, I drop it back to two so I just scroll the selector to two, uh, and then I finish off with by hand. So there's a couple of things that I've done over the time when with these, because I take things apart on the truck quite regularly. Uh, some of the things I noticed is like a lot of the receipt, like a lot of the little Teflon, I don't even know, Teflon plastic, they're, they're plastic uh, holder, like these. there's a little grommet in behind here. That the screw actually goes into it doesn't actually screw into metal it screws into plastic um, so what i did was i got some gasket sealer so sunk that in to you know the normal to the two setting i suppose i don't even know what the two setting stands for um it must be something to do with torque or power or something um so re sorry remove i took the screw out when it was all apart squeezed gasket sealer into the plastic bits sunk the screw back into uh, torque setting two and then left it and i left it for 24 hours um and then came back and finished off tightening it up i just got a bit trigger happy with the old gasket sealer gasket maker particularly the gray stuff um because that's how i've actually sealed my globes so in the back of the unit here you'll see that if i can get the camera in there there is no rubber grommet anymore. So these lights come with a, with a rubber grommet and you can probably make out the gasket sealer there. So initially I just fitted up the globes, drove it around for a day just to try it out. Um, and yeah, I was happy with how it worked and how everything went and, and so forth. Then I ended up taking it all back apart, pulling it all apart again, putting the, putting the gasket sealer in. Um, you may wonder why I've gone with the gasket sealer and not used, I have actually kept the rubber boots that actually go on the back here to, seal the uh, headlight unit but because this particular model of led headlight comes with these cooling uh, strips there's four of them you, you, you need to have those either inside the light globe apparently or you know out in the air um, to allow the globe to cool so i just figured i'll gasket seal it and happy days and it seems to be working pretty well so obviously when you get the units they're pretty simple to actually put in there is a straight plug in um, so you literally unplug, well, whenever I play with these headlights, I actually remove the whole front. So it's pretty simple. Screw here, screw here, screw here. Um, remove the two screws in the apron indicator behind there. One screw there, that whole assembly comes out. Then remove the, oh, sorry, the, and then around the outside here, you can probably make it out. There's a little, this little metal here actually holds that globe in. I find that easier. Then I'm trying to stick in your hand down there and try and remove the globe. It's just, there's not much room. I mean, 
Like, I'm not a big guy, but my hand just barely fits in there. Uh, that's the easy way. So, uh, yeah, so it's literally plug in this little, I don't know, transformer -y type thing, whatever it does, some sort of controller. Um, I've just hung, <laughs> hung them wherever I could. That's the bonnet cable. Um, but I did the right thing. I actually then cable tied the bonnet cable to the, to the uh, support mount here. So, you yeah, <laughs> know, it works. And uh, yeah, obviously repeat, same over there, but um, incredibly simple, incredibly easy to do, a little bit exy, um, but make the world a difference, uh, especially when you're driving without high beams. So for those considering LED replacement, uh, particularly those with old Land Cruisers, just do it. You, you, it's just, it's much more pleasurable driving at night and you really aren't, as, as worried anymore about not being able to see. So I drive a lot on country roads and you know, doing 100 kilometres an hour, uh, you know, barely being able to see 100 metres down the road. You know, it'd take me 200 metres to stop. As so anyone that drives an old Land Cruiser know, know what I mean. Once you get it up there, you know, they, they, she doesn't like going overly fast, but she doesn't really like stopping that much as well. So it's not, not like a new car. So uh, investments uh, in safety is really a really important thing so you don't have to go the the super kings model i did only because they were in town and they were pretty affordable terra loom do a drop-in replacement uh i think steady do a drop-in replacement as well but yeah but the only thing i'll advise is probably stay away from anything that doesn't come come with a bit of a brand recognition um so obviously they do particularly if you've got in not I suppose if you've got a new vehicle, you're probably not watching this anyway, but um, for the slightly mo more modern vehicles, apparently you can run into issues with the computer as well, throwing up warning, warnings and a few other bits and pieces. So if these little componentry, these little things here, these little widgets, whatever they do, um, if they're not of good quality, then you can actually run into some issues. But um, yeah, I think for the sake of you know, a couple hundred bucks, it made a massive difference to my driving at night um, and then obviously new bar and some new lights she uh yeah she will be looking a long way down the road so enjoy happy days have a good one see you bye